Greetings, everyone. Well, I was going to save this message for my Daughters of the Dawn conference next month, but um, I feel it's very significant and timely. On the morning of February 8th, Wednesday, I had this incredible dream and uh, I shared it with my son and I was on a Zoom call to South Africa that day. I shared it with, with the gentleman there, but this was the dream. I was in a Baptist church and I recognized it. It was the church I got married in, in 1970, okay? And as the dream unfolded, I was near the back of the church and I was raising my hands and it kind of loosed the people in front of me that they were afraid to lift their hands in praise because they said they were afraid they would get kicked out of the church. Now that's that old religious spirit, okay? But as I'm watching the dream unfold, um, my nephew came up. He's my oldest nephew. He came up on the stage. Now, let me give you just a little background here. In November last year, my last uh, in-law from my first marriage had passed away. And I was back home for the funeral. And I was able to spend time with my nephews and niece, his children. And the oldest son, is now, his name is Ed, and he is, in real life, he is a doctor. And he now is the patriarch of the family. So in this dream, Ed, the doctor, he comes up on the stage, and I believe he represents the father. He comes up on the stage, and he began to sing. And it was such an incredible voice in, in the song he was singing, it was a spiritual song. It was not, you know, an old Baptist hymnal. It was a spiritual song. But as he began to sing, um, then he welcomed up the bride and the groom, which was really beautiful. And I noticed that the, the bride had, you know, she had a beautiful long white dress on and uh, dark hair, and her veil had already been pulled back over her, you know, from off of her face. So the marriage had already taken place, all right? They were now, you know, husband and wife, but he called the bride and the groom up to uh, the stage. And when they came up, they began to dance. Now, remember, I'm at kind of the back of the church. My youngest uh, nephew, he asked me to dance. And I was like, you know, he's like, 30 or 40 years younger than me, why would he want to dance with me? But we began to dance. And as we did, other people, other couples began to join us. There were no pews. It's like all the pews had been removed. That old religious spirit was gone. And they began to dance. So this is what I felt. I had this knowing in my spirit. I knew that this was the dance of the bride and the groom. Her veil had been lifted. It was a move of the Holy Spirit in the denominational churches. And I felt there is a breakthrough from the religious spirit to the Holy Spirit. And the spirit and the bride say come. That's Revelation 22, 17. So I knew that. Um, now, I also believe, you know, Scripture says in Zephaniah 3, 17, that the Lord rejoices over us with singing. This was the most incredible voice that I've ever heard. And I know my nephew, he does play piano and sing, but it was not his voice that I was hearing. Um, the veil had been lifted so that the bride of Christ can come forward. It's that bridal dance of intimacy. You know, when the Lord had me start this Daughters of the Dawn, that's what he said. He was coming to lift the veil off the face of the bride, off of his beloved. So uh, now that I did not know until two days later that there was <clears throat> a revival that started that morning at Asbury University. I thought, it's just, that was just amazing to me. I believe the Lord was showing me uh, previews of coming attractions. Now, let me say also, you know, that was uh, Wilmore, Kentucky. Um, my nephew, his name 
it means victorious one. I do believe this is victory, victory over that old religious spirit. It's John 17, 10. All mine are yours and yours are mine and I am glorified in them. Is the Lord not glorified through his children? And Brian, the youngest uh, nephew, his name is Victorious Spirit. It's Isaiah 48, 17. It's the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. He is the one who teaches you to profit and leads you by the way you should go. And this is a leading of the Holy Spirit. Now, no man should be taking credit for what God is doing in this moment at this university, and it is spreading to other universities. So I'm going to refer back to a message I made last week. Um, now, this happened on February 8th, Wednesday. The Super Bowl was Sunday, uh, the 12th of February. And the score was uh, Kansas City Chiefs um, 38. And I said that was Isaiah 38. And it's also 2 Kings 20, verse 5 and 6. They both say the same thing. It's about Hezekiah and how God was giving him uh, more years. But he says in 2 Kings 20, verse 6, it's a hope for this nation that God will deliver her from her enemies for his sake, okay? And I believe there's been an outcry. That's what it says here too. Uh, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Surely I will heal you. And on the third day, you shall go up to the house of the Lord. Now, Here's something else you can look at. I said I was in, it, it was the church I got married in, and that was 1970. 1970 is when Kansas City won the Super Bowl, and 50 years later, they won it in 2020, okay? But then there was a three-year period. And there you say, saying on the third day or three years, okay? It's been three years, uh, I just call these my little tidbits, three years. This is 2023. That's when there's like a second uh, happening, a coming, a second appearance. Um, and also with the um, the other team there, the Eagles, the Philadelphia Eagles, you know, Philadelphia, it's a city of brotherly love and love is being poured out. That uh, is Isaiah... Uh, 35, the highway of holiness. Well, think about this. Asbury University, it was originally called holiness, a holiness college. Okay, holiness. And we're going back to the highway of holiness. This was established in 1890. So its roots was holiness. So I feel there's signs pointing us back to those spiritual roots, where they came from. Okay, we should not be the Laodicean church. Unfortunately, I believe, you know, with uh, there's a lot of seeker friendly churches and, you know, we're a lot of compromise in the church, but we're going back to the holiness of God, not the holiness of man, but the holiness of God. So allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us and we follow, not manipulating, but pure, brotherly, unconditional love. So I thought that was a powerful dream. I was, I told my friends and my son, we're doing that Zoom call on Wednesday the 8th. And I said, I'm saving this for the uh, Daughters of the Dawn Conference because, you know, this is what it's all about. The veil had already been lifted. There was already marriage that took place and it was the intimate dance, the bridal dance of the bride and the groom and the body joining in. But when I realize that, you know, what is taking place in the college and it's spreading to other colleges, this is a move of God. It's, if you want to say, outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, it is God, period. Put the name on it, whatever you want, but this is God. And it's not to be manipulated. It's not to be orchestrated. I don't even think it should be televised because a lot of times you get stuff in there like that and then it takes away from the purity of what God is doing, okay? All right, well, hey, I hope you enjoyed that and I plan to build 
on and seek the Lord for more and a greater revelation of what he's saying in this extraordinary dream that I had. Okay, all right, till next time, be blessed.